I ask that the congregation please stand and turn to face the font for a confession and forgiveness. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, 
save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you will take away the sin of the Lord. pray. Lord God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Let us now by, lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sh sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Apha. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord, the word of the Lord.
reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Jesus Christ, for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise of in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant, according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, and for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today from St. Matthew tells the story of the giving of gifts. Wise men kneeling before Jesus, giving him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Of course, there's some meanings behind those gifts that we've We've thought about over the years in the Christian church. The gold, of course, represents the fact that Jesus is the king, right? The king of creation. And kings wear crowns of gold, so the, the 
gift of gold was appropriate for him, pointed to who he was. The frankincense, that would be something that would be uh, burned in the temple by the, by the high priest. And so Jesus, he becomes our high priest. Uh, that's what the frankincense points to because he's our intercessor between us and the Father. And of course we have the myrrh. Uh, the myrrh was something that they would use to wrap a body in when it was going to be buried. And of course that points forward to Jesus' suffering on the cross, his death, and his resurrection. So gift giving to the, to the Christ child and uh, all those gifts pointed to something about Jesus. Now, gift giving and receiving are a wonderful part of Christmas time, which we are wrapping up today with the celebration of Epiphany. Uh, and we may say that gift giving uh, was inspired by the story of the, of the Magi, the wise men coming to Jesus and giving him gifts. So question for you, what were your best gifts this Christmas? What did you like the most? Um, this morning I asked um, one of our accolades who was working and he said a drone. <laughs> so I, you know, I could see that. That sounds like a lot of fun, you know, a drone going around. Um, our other accolade this morning said, I liked everything I got. And her mother was very pleased. You know, she'd had a good Christmas. Um, I don't know about you, but when... Um, I was a kid, I was always disappointed to get clothing for Christmas, you know, did you ever have this, you know, not too many toys, but you got lots of socks and underwear and maybe a couple of pair of jeans. I find as I get older, I don't, I don't mind those gifts, I got a lot of socks and underwear and jeans, it's, <laughs> that was just fine by me. But what was your favorite gift this, uh, this Christmas and did you re receive anything that gladdened your heart? That's the question, did you get anything that gladdened your heart? I hope you can name a few gifts that gladdened your heart. But I want to add today to your list, the good news is that because of Christmas, we receive what we need every day of the year, every day of our lives. First, we receive God's love. Second, we come to know a God whom we can count on. And third, we receive a love worthy of sharing. Um, so we receive God's love, we come to know a God that we can count on, and we receive a love worth sharing. So let's talk about the gift of God's love. The wise men, they traveled a long way to worship the Christ child. They followed that beautiful star in the east and it led them to the humble residence of Jesus. And when they saw the Christ, they were overcome with joy and they, they bowed down and they paid him homage. And they opened their treasures and presented him with those extravagant gifts. What was it about Jesus that caused the wise men to travel so far and give, give so extravagantly? What caused them to bow down and, and pay homage, worship him? To better understand what the wise men received from Jesus, let me tell you an old legend about God the Father and God the Son. On the night of Christmas, Jesus was getting ready to go to earth. And just before he left heaven that night, Jesus asked, Any advice, Father? What do you want me to tell them? And the Father replied, Don't complicate things. Just tell them how much I love them. Not scriptural, but I like the little story. Scholars and theologians have filled libraries telling us who they think God is. Um, if, you've, if you ever take a class in uh, Trinitarian theology you'll know that a lot of these books are really hard to get through, believe me. Um, but you can take all that the theologians have, have written about God and it would not come close to how the Bible is able to explain God in three simple words. God is love. And that's what John, the beloved disciple, writes in his first letter. He says, God is love. So, you, my friends, all of you, you were made from God's love. Um, God is, as a matter of fact, in love with you. And that is what God wants us to receive and experience at Christmas. I believe the wise men experienced this love when they saw Christ, and it is what caused them to, to give and to pay homage. They were overjoyed in the presence of our loving God. Most importantly, knowing you are loved gives you your identity. 
You are a child of God. You were created in the image of God. Um, You were loved into existence by God who loves you more than you could ever imagine. Jesus said it well. Anyone who loves me, I will come to him and make my home with him. You were loved by God, and when you accept and experience that love, you discover that you were not created by accident. God took the time to form and shape you, and you are special to God. As Psalm 139 expresses it, You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God creates us in love, and then... We respond in praise. So, because of Christmas, the coming of Jesus, uh, we receive God's love. And at Christmas, we come to know a God whom we can count on. This God who is love is always working to woo us into a relationship with him. And that's really what Christianity is all about. Christianity is not... A bunch of rules and regulations or a good moral story. Christianity is a relationship. A relationship with the one who loved you into existence. A relationship with one who sees you as a beloved child. A relationship with one who has a purpose for your life. A a relationship with a God you can count on. God could have chosen to reveal himself to us in an easier way. But because he wants a relationship with us, God became one of us in Christ. He took, second person of the Trinity, took human flesh into himself. He came to show us that he loves us and we can count on him no matter what. And we know, as Christians, we are not perfect. We are sinners, every one of us. So deeply embroiled in our sins, we can never get out of our sinfulness ourselves. And we as Christians, we don't have all the answers. Um, Christians are not necessarily better than other people, but Christians are those people who have learned that God can be trusted. We turn our attention to this God who comes to us, and we know that God can be trusted, and he can be our peace in the midst of the storm. God can be trusted to to take what is evil and ultimately to transform it into something good. He sets things right in his time. God can be trusted to empower you in the midst of trouble so that you can look back and say, yeah, God walked with me the whole way. God can be trusted to receive you even when you die. God can be trusted. And Christians are people who have learned that we have a God whom we can count on. One of my favorite spiritual writers is Henri now, and I quote him all the time. And Henri tells the story about how he received his greatest revelation about trusting in God, counting on God. And he received this revelation at the circus, of all places. Now and went to see the German trapeze group, uh, the Flying Rodleys. And he was mesmerized by their uh, performance as they flew gracefully through the air. Trapeze artists they were. At the end of the show, he spoke with the leader of the troupe, Rodley himself. And now one asked him how he was able to perform with such grace and ease so high in the air. And Rodley responded, The public might think that I am the great star of the trapeze, but the real star is Joe, my catcher. The secret is that the flyer does nothing, and the catcher does everything. When I fly to Joe, I have simply to stretch out my arms and hands and wait for him to catch me. The worst thing the flyer can do is to try to catch the catcher. I'm not supposed to catch Joe. It's Joe's task to catch me. Likewise, we make a a mistake if we think we can grab onto God. We cannot catch God with our knowledge. We can never know enough. We cannot catch God with our good works because we can never do enough. We can never catch God by being in control. Next to God, we are powerless. The good news is it's not our job to catch God. God catches us. And that's what 
It's Christmas season. This epiphany season is all about God coming to us through Jesus to catch us up into his life and love. Jesus forgives our sinfulness and he saves us from death and from the power of evil. Christmas is coming to know a God we can count on. Christmas is also about receiving a love worth sharing. Again, in John's first letter, we read, Beloved, since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one's ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. So here's a simple truth. Do you want to experience God? Well, share God's love. Give away God's love. God's love is perfected within us when we share his love with the world. Believe me, you will feel God when you share his love with others. God has worked on me with this one for a very long time. God sends me out to be with people because he has called me to do that task. So I share the love of God to people who are sick or distressed. But God also uses those times to grow me. I learned long ago from a mentor that my task is to share a loving God with the people that I visit with. So I always read scripture and prayer. And I pray with those people. That way it doesn't depend on, you know, my personality that I'm bringing to them, right? So, uh, I trust God to work through that scripture that I read and the, and the prayers I say. And, I'm, and sure enough, God's love is always present and I can often feel it as we, we hear that word of God and we, we raise up prayers to, to God of, of maybe lament and hope. God has really had to work hard with me over the years to help me to understand all of that. Another thing that God has taught me, although I have been slow to learn, is that there are people everywhere who are hungry for God's love. There are people we come across every day who are hungry for someone to tell them that they are loved. In, uh, in a book entitled The God Who Won't Let Go, Father Peter Bremen, a Roman Catholic priest, uh, tells of a time that he was in a grocery store late at night with only one checkout line open. Uh, there was a long line of restless and impatient people waiting with their groceries. Uh, Bremen noticed that the people in front of the line were in a good mood. As he got closer to the checkout, he figured out why. The cashier had taken a piece of cardboard and made a sign and put it in front of her. The sign said, we have been made with love. Please treat us accordingly. People need to be loved. And when we see that in them and act accordingly, it changes things. Father Bremen goes on in his book to explain what loving someone else is about. His definition of love goes like this. Love is revealing to someone else that person's own beauty. When God's love shows through in another person, it is important to let them know that. A person cannot discover on their own how God is working his love through them. They need another person to point it out. Uh, there's a, a true story about a, a man who took that opportunity to show a woman, uh, the, the love of God that was already shining through her. It happened in North Carolina in a pizza hut. And a, a mom took her four-year-old daughter and six-year-old son out for pizza. You know, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it can be a very big deal when your son uh, has Asperger's and ADHD and your daughter has her own behavioral problems. After they arrived, she apologized in advance to a man sitting nearby because her kids tended to be loud and sort of obnoxious. She even suggested that he might want to move to the other side of the restaurant. The man said he didn't mind, and he went about eating his meal. For the next several minutes, the mom did her best to control her kids in a public environment. When the man left the restaurant, the waitress approached the woman's table and informed her that the man who was sitting beside them had paid her bill, left her a gift card, and written her a letter. Part of the letter read, 
I do not know your backstory, but I have had the privilege of watching you parent your children for the past 30 minutes. I have watched you teach your children about the importance of respect, education, proper manners, communication, self-control, and kindness, all while being very patient. I will never cross your path again, but I am positive that you and your children have amazing futures. This man had a love worth sharing, and he shared that love by showing this mother her beauty, how God's love worked through her. Gift giving and receiving are a wonderful part of Christmas time, and the story of the wise men visiting Jesus tells us that. The truth is, this season of Christmas and Epiphany that we're now entering into gives us so much. We learn that we are loved by God. We come to know a God whom we can count on, and we receive a love worth sharing. And may these gifts of this beautiful season last all year long and for the rest of your life. And may they gladden your heart. Amen.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Jesus Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and Christ Jesus, for all people, according to their needs. God of light, illumine your church with the gospel, so that your wisdom might be made known throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, God of light, draw all nations to the brightness of your dawn, so that their leaders will work to end oppression and violence everywhere. We pray for an end to warfare between Russia and Ukraine. Lord, reach your hand into that war and, and stop it. We also pray that you would be with the people of Israel and in their, in their warfare against Hamas, and that in time the people of the Palestinians and the Israelis would find a peace that would last. Lord, in your mercy, God of light, defend the cause of the poor and deliver those who have no helpers, that their hearts might rejoice in your justice. We pray especially, Lord, for, for churches that are persecuted, and we continue to pray for the churches and the Christian people of Nigeria. 200 of whom were, were murdered on Christmas Eve. And their, their churches burned by militia. We pray that you would heal uh, their wounds and be with them in their grief. Lord, in your mercy. God of light, uh, come to the aid of the, the sick and, and those who need your healing power in their lives. Uh, grant them hope in you. We name before you on this day. Jeanette Calhoun, Mike Benfer, Harold Raup, Frida Kiefer, Ursula Leinbach, John Hemrick, Pastor Steve Mitternacht, Shelley Craig, Walter Crawford, Joyce Osmond, Ron Koch, Shirley Mengus, Leonard Tyson, Carla Mahaffey, Mandy Stout, Janice Knauer, Ron Ott, Susan Grube, Ronnie Johnston, Jeff Grube, Eileen Montgomery, Bob Temple, Derek Kotner, Jason Metzger, Sandy Schuyler Fairman, Brad Lidecker, Julia Tebbets, Lana Reed, Donna Bridges, Tom and Jonas Snyder, Mary Betts, Sue Hummel, Keith Whitmer, Greg Travis, Judah Rex Elkin, Megan Sheets, Paula Davis, Liam, Deb Bryson, Valerie, George Fry, Robert Stom, Tyler Morton, George Trutt, Sue Ramali, Marty Hockenberry, C.J. Mackley, Donna Ayers, Mark and Michelle Land, Jackie Fligger, Tom and Walt Fogelman, Ken Reynolds, Denise Hall, Vern Lewis, Del Moser, George Albertson, Bill Reisner, Joe Goff, Nate Whitmer, and all those we name now out loud before you. Grant them, Lord, your healing power. Bless those who watch over them. Lord, in your mercy. God of light, open our eyes to the mystery of Christ revealed to us through word and holy communion so that our congregational life would reflect Christ to our community. 
Lord, in your mercy. God of light, we give you thanks for all throughout the ages who have paid homage to Christ. We pray especially on this day, remembering Brian Hamrick and Russ Wynn. May they be constant witnesses to us of your great mercy so that we might extend your grace to the outsiders in our time. Lord, in your mercy, to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And assure the peace.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, have been heard, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name. Blessed are you, O holy God, you are the life and light of all. By your powerful word you created all things. Through the prophets you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us in this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy are those who are called to a supper. Thanks be to God.
his peace. Amen. Come to the table for all is ready, the gifts of God for the people of God. Sure. Come there. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.